Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. All right, I get a ton of questions about this. How much solar do I need in order to live happily in the RV? So I'm gonna cover that, but I'm also gonna give you two other things that you need to think about. By the way, since this is just a small tech tip, let me point you over to our other channel where we do a deep dive, where we bring on you know uh, experts in whatever field to sit down and talk about that. So go ahead and check out the link below and watch our deep dive on this subject here. All right, so let me go ahead and cover roughly how much solar uh, do we need. Now, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I've talked about this quite a bit. Solar typically just means how many solar panels, you know, someone is asking for. And what they're really trying to say is, you know, I want a whole system that is running off my batteries, okay? So we typically call those solar systems. But if the question comes out how much solar, typically what they're asking is how many solar panels do I need? Now. With the advent of lithium batteries, it's really changed the game because you had to be pretty precise to how many solar panels you needed to your lead acid batteries. Now, if you've watched any of my tech tips, you know that lead acid batteries cannot take the same charge rate that lithium batteries can, uh, probably about a third. And so you had some numbers out there that people would say you want one watt per amp hour of uh, solar to your lead acid batteries. Now, here's the thing. When you have lithium batteries, I mean, it is almost, you know, sky's the limit. But when it comes to your RV, it's really about how much roof space do you have, okay? Because that's your limiting factor now. It's not the batteries, it's not the solar panels, it's your roof space. How much do you need to fill up the roof where you can still get to your um, air conditioners to go ahead and clean them? Now, on average, you know, for a, um, between a 38 footer and a 43 footer, uh, fifth wheel, motor coach, um, even the long tra travel trailers, you're gonna look between 2000, and maybe 3,500 watts without floating over. Now, some builds we've done, we've got uh, upwards of 4,500 watts. And I know what you're thinking, holy cow, that's a lot of wattage. But here's the thing, you don't have to put that much on there, but here's what we need to get to. A lot of people are going and getting a full um, inverted system with solar panels and everything else because they want to live off grid and run multiple air conditioners. And that's kind of funny because I get my keyboard warrior saying you don't need air conditioners. And to that, I would say somewhat of that is true because you have an RV and you have wheels. Move it where you don't have to run air conditioners. However, you got other people that got you know checkbooks and they'll say, you know what? I want to be able to take my RV and my power and go anywhere, any time of year. Now that's freedom, but what do they need? Checkbook to do that. So how much solar do we need? Well, as much as your roof will allow for us to still get up there as technicians, clean those coils, everything else, service those air conditioners. Now here's the two things that I need you to think about. If you do go with a full solar system, oh my goodness, you, the owner, you need to learn how that system works. Now let's think about this. You're going off grid, you have a system put in, and if you know nothing about the system, when there are occurrences where it needs to be reset or whatever there may be, you're at a loss, right? So the one thing I can implore you is whatever you do, if you're deciding to go solar, study up, okay? Now, one of the things, and it's not a plug, but <laughs> hello, over here at the National RV Training Academy, we have solar training to help you with that. Now, I'll also get to my second thing. There's really only one brand of inverter or, you know, full solar system that I can fully endorse right now, and that is the Vitron system. I'll explain why. I'm working with a lot of different uh, inverter companies, you know, always talking this out, and they're saying, hey, we want to get in the RV industry. Here is our offerings. We have a 120-volt model, and we have a 240-volt model, right? So this is for the 30-amp service, and this is for the 50-amp service. The problem is, if you have a 50 amp service, you're not limited to be plugged into 240. Well, what do I mean? Well, you can dog bone down to 120 volts. Well, if you have a large system, and maybe there's two inverters, one for each leg on a big 50 amp service. Again, if you wanna run two ACs at the same time, or 
an air conditioner and the microwave at the same time, and of course your residential style refrigerator, chances are, being 240, you need two inverters. Now they're getting better and getting bigger, but right now, two inverters is really the only way to go to run two air conditioners anywhere. And I know I got some of you, Todd, with this one over here with my 3000 KVA or 3000 uh, VA, by the way, volt amps, I know that it's easier to say watts, but I get people going, ah, oh, you're not saying power factor. All right, I can run two off of that from time to time. In cool weather, you can, right? But again, the goal here is that people are asking about, you know, building a system to go anywhere, no limitations. And for a lot of RVers like me, that's what got me excited about this. I grew up in a mobile home, those things weren't mobile, right? And I wanted nothing to do with the RV space. And it's the freedom that RVs give us that really enticed me into this market. Now, part of that freedom is, okay, yes, I wanna live off grid, but with a small system, it's off grid with limitations. I could be here, here, but I can't run this or this, right? What if you can build a system, which we can, what if you had a system that you can pretty much go anywhere um, with very little limitations, okay? Very little limitations, right? There's still some considerations. You don't wanna go somewhere in your RV and it'd be negative 40 degrees. I mean, you got some bad decision-making skills when you do that, but you can still go somewhere where it's extremely hot um, and of course turn on two ACs, sometimes even three, if it's built right, right? And that is the draw. So yes, systems can be as tiny, solar system as one panel charging a battery. Not all systems have to be huge. But what I'm trying to point out is, is they can go from the smallest system to the largest. And if you're getting one of the larger ones and you're depending on it, what did I say? Learn it. Now, when it comes to brands, if you're looking at one of those large systems to run 240, but you wanna plug into 120 volt or you want a mooch dock, Vitron is really the only way to go because it can be programmed that way, where one inverter becomes a charger and the other inverter stays inverting, right? Without throwing in auto formers and everything else that adds weight with other brands. So there you go. How much solar do I need, quite honestly? How much roof space do you have, right? And then how much money do you have? And then understand that whatever solar system you decide to get, Learn it because whenever it goes down, when I say learn it, I'm not talking about going through full electrical, but what happens, you know, you have to read up on the manual, find out what does my system do when this happens or whenever this happens, what does that mean, right? Because they're not great at talking to us. And again, really the only brand that does talk to us quite a bit and gives us the information is the Vitron system. So guys, there's a lot to learn, but the opportunity is huge. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. Are you ready? I'm ready. What is our website called or what is the YouTube's called? Uh, we have the link. So check out the link below, click on it, and get into our deep dive. <laughs> so check out the link below. <laughs> grew up in a travel trailer. I mean, grew up in a... a um, <laughs> Manufacturing trailer? Yeah, no, what are they called? Um, mobile home. Mobile home.